All right, we're gonna dive right into blue here with Aegis Turtle up first. It's a single blue for an 05. Yeah, yeah. So I think if there's anything that we've come to learn, it's uh -huh. the, uh, the 05. Yeah. Um, this this seems like kind of so so in the same way that Riptide Turtle was important for blocking the escape creatures without them dying. This seems possibly important for blocking like early mutate creatures for for cheap, right? Like, mm -hmm. just, like you, you know your opponent can't play a four mana four four attack on turn three and just run you over, right? This this seems like it could be a, an important tool for the blue decks. Yeah, that being said, it's not super powerful, but nope. I you know. Don't want to dismiss it. I think it's going to make some decks uh, if that's what the blue decks, if that's the piece the blue decks need. But otherwise, yeah. I agree. I, so you want D plus? Yeah, like, you know, synergy, synergy C minors or whatever. Okay. You're up, boss. All right, let's get to anticipate. We got one in blue for an instant. Classic. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom in any order. Um, blue, blue red is a spells matter theme. Yeah. That's that's about as far as we can go with this card, right? Yeah. Like you're never super excited to play with this card. I you know that there are a decent amount of the, the the instant set in this uh this format reminds me a little bit of M nineteen, where like you, you did have like we just had this like self contained um instant package. So like anticipate essence scatter like these are all just fine cards because you can just cast them uh, and hold up the mana. So like anticipate gets better there, but you know it's it's I imagine this is gonna be wheeling material. I like think this is, yeah I don't think this is good especially with with cycling in the format. I think this the is thing good. yeah exactly and the thing is even in your spells matter deck this isn't ever what you want to be doing. You want to no. cast removal spells or like card draw spells yeah, or like I... you know count spells. So yeah I'm I'm giving I'm gonna give anticipate a D. Yeah, I'm, I'm in for D for Anticipate as well. And pretty now, I guess to a card that just says cycling. Right? Chat's about to rage. Um, okay. Capture Sphere is three and a blue for a flash aura. When it ETBs, you tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Cool. We haven't seen, like, an untap trick, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is one in green, though. There is an untap trick in green? Yeah. Um... Yeah, the classic, the battle rage is on, right? Blue tap, tap enchantment spell against green, untapped combat trick. Cycling is not an instant; it's an activated ability. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, last time we saw capture spear, it was it was sort of bad, but that was contextual. Right. So right. it was in uh, Guilds of Ravnica, where is it wanted it to wanted its non-creature things to be actual instants and sorceries, and yeah, it, Demir just had way better removal. Yeah, exactly, and. Also, like that was a, a fairly fast format mm -hmm. when it kind of came to like how you want to be using your mana. So like four mana, kill their two drop that you need to kill it is some but sometimes isn't good enough. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start this as like a C, right? Yeah. I think no, as, for the first copy know, being a C. The same conversation we had about passivism applies to this, right? Mm -hmm. Like thinking about like mutate and how it changes this a little bit. But uh, yeah, I think I think just baseline a C is yeah. sort of fine. All right, next up we have convolute, two and blue for an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays for. Uh, so you're never super excited to play this, but it goes up if we are in in the world where we're putting you know eight to nine instants in our deck. Um, it's not awful then, but mm -hmm. I assume I, I imagine you're. I, I can't imagine the blue decks in this format wanting to be like a draw go deck, right? I, I, I don't, don't think so. I just don't know how often that's that's gonna like. Just, just looking at the incentives of the other colors, I just don't think that lines up all that well with 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 uh, counter magic, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm just like you know, basically when this kind of card comes around, I'm looking for a, a contextual reason to give it a, a grade higher than I would normally, and I can't see that currently. Maybe the reason is that there are a bunch of busted spells in this format, and counter spells are a catch-all answer to it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think we're just gonna we're just gonna like. Put to the C minus and call it a day. Yeah, I'm gonna go D plus. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Crustacean is <laughs> up next. This is three and a blue for a one six crab with flash. Okay. I mean, I can just imagine this guy just chunking down. This yeah. Big old one six. Um. It yeah it, it's it's this certain, card is well, not good. No, I, I don't think so either. But you know, it's, again, it's a flash thing. It's an instant speed thing. I think they've actually done a pretty good job if you think about in in Eldring and and. Theros of like 
blue like the reason cancel has become a, a good card in the past six months is because they've surrounded it with other instants right yes and we, we are seeing a bit of that here right mm -hmm. so maybe maybe that makes this a little bit better uh and and again it just it blocks everything basically so i don't want to say this isn't good it's not it's not a powerful card but i think it's going to be like the wish coin crab and the, the turtle where you, you are going to make put this in your blue deck some of the time well the toughness matters aura only does it if the creature has vigilance right Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Unfortunately. So you put a Vigilance counter on it. So you put a Vigilance counter on it, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to go D plus again. Sure, yeah. I, I, All right, well, I'm excited to hear you talk me off the ledge and off this next card, Alex. Okay, so this is Dreamtail Heron. This is four and a blue for a 3-4 flyer. Mutate for four mana. Flying when this creature mutates, draw a card. So don't get me wrong. This is a good card. Right. Actually, you know, you, you 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 tell me. Give me a baseline here. Give me a read on this card. I, I'll, I'll, I'm I'll... going to give this card a B minus. You want to give this card a B minus? Okay. Yes. Um. So what what are the what are the play patterns you're imagining with this card? So the play patterns I'm imagining is that I have something. Yeah. <laughs> on the battlefield. Be that careful. I... I can't be a human. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. <laughs> I'll be very careful to have it not be a human, and then I will mutate onto it for four mana. I will. Have... Turn that thing into a 3-4 flyer with haste. Mm -hmm. I will immediately recoup the loss of losing the card that I've mutated onto. Yes. And I will nug in for three against my opponent, who has probably already right-clicked conceded the match. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I agree a lot of, like, those are, uh, that's gonna, that's gonna, that's, that's a good sequence, right? It's pretty good. Um, I think, so, so just, I guess, just to, to make some of the things that are, potentially obvious but just like putting them straight out there like that's you're, you're gaining your card back at that point right mm -hmm. your card parity which is good right um you put this on your three drop you're now ostensibly you know you might have played it two but ostensibly let's let's say you you didn't play it two mm -hmm. and you want to mutate this so so then your board is just a three four and you've attacked with it doesn't that seem kind of bad on four, on four mana your board is just a tapped three four I, I guess I don't isn't know. Isn't that is so so my argument here is that like so that, then don't do that. Then just play this as a five mana three four and mutate right, onto right. it later. Like exactly no no that, that's what I agree. That's what I'm getting at here. So I think that like I was saying before, I think most of the time you're gonna be playing this card as five mana three four, right? And and the late game is gonna be, you know, you're gonna cantrip and then it's gonna be a threat of activation kind of thingy. But I, I just don't think how about this? I, I don't want to talk in the card too much. I just think that you're going to play this card out more often than you're mutating on 4. I don't think you're mutating this on 4 all that often. Almost never. Uh, strongly disagree. But, strongly disagree. But there's no no way to know. There's no way to know. Yeah, no, no, so Almost I, never sounds insane to me. I, 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 I just I, don't know what you're doing then. I think you're just playing this out. I think like I think just in the same vein as like those other value-ish cards, like, this is a tempo negative play. Yes. If you do that on turn four. I agree. Right? I think that's bad in the early turns, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it's not like you're like, again, it's not like you're getting a stat boost, right? You're, you're just you're just purely giving your creature maybe a bit of a stat boost and flying. And you you're know, on cards. I right? just feel like, I feel like we're getting like some Nessian boar action here where like, you're not forced to attack with this. No, you can have your four mana three, four flyer too. Yes, but uh, I, I don't want to get into worst case scenario here. But, like, imagine putting this on your three mana card and they have any interaction spell. They have, like, three creatures. So you're facing the human deck. Isn't that a nightmare where they, like, remove... But then this? aren't you just not mutating? Like, I... <laughs> so you are describing scenarios where I am not going to mutate. You're right. Yeah, That's, okay. So, this so, so, card so, has, like, three different modes to it where it's like, yeah, mutate yeah, yeah. and attack, mutate, not attack, don't mutate. That's yeah, very I, good. <laughs> so I think maybe 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 me saying, like, I think we're going to disagree on this card, like, frame this wrong. I, I started this, this conversation off wrong, I think. Okay. Because I agree. I, my only argument here is I just don't think we're mutating it on all that often. I think we're playing this out as a fine value card on five. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, that's all. I think one of the modes isn't all that likely, but... You know, obviously, it's great if you have the option, right? Know, I'm, I'm taking the what's it called? I'm taking Skittering Surveyor High. I'm taking it over any other common, and then I'm just suiting it up with Dreamtail Heron. <laughs> but uh, so I, I think that sequence is is okay, right? I think you're like, you know, you're up a card because you've drawn a land. But I like again, I don't think like on board tempo wise, I don't think that sequence is very good. But we'll see, we'll see. I don't want to get, I don't want to argue too much on this one. I think it's good. Um, I think like I've heard, I've seen this called busted. 
but I, I just think it's like you know like C plus C plus B minus. Yeah, I'm I'm going B minus. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I, I I'm gonna go C plus on this one. Okay. All right. So we've got uh, essence scatter is next. Yeah, this is one in a blue instant counter target creature spell. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I think it's crazy. It's so efficient. Five. Essence scatter is even in Omnicat when it was like a super fast format and leaving mana up kind of was risky. The card was even good there. So essence scatter has. I don't know. I, I I didn't play in the core sets when this first was printed, but it's almost always been good. Um, it's just such a a good exchange of mana. I think this will be the best common in blue. Yeah, I, I'm I'm on board for that. At least I, early. I'm gonna right. go B. Yeah, I'm done for that. Um, and yes, you can counter uh, mutate. Yeah, which is awesome because it says if you cast the spell for the mutate cost. So All we right. have facet reader here this is one in a blue for a one two one mana tap draw a card and then discard a card yeah. so you remember you remember the days when we had i don't know remember i think it was m15 it was Morpho like folk well not that though that was on the that was the great end we went, we went way past the on the other end of the spectrum we had like four mana to loot at one point oh, yeah. That yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> that was real bad um this one's good it's you don't get the free like the, the 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 great thing about Murfolk Looter is you keep a two land hand and, and like you're you're still just off for the races. You don't lose any tempo because you can just fix your hand automatically on turn two. Mm -hmm. This one, you know, you can't play out your three, you can't play out your four on curve if you need to fix your hand. It's still great. This is still a very good card, right? I think it's wait. I don't think this is great, especially oh, especially great. in a set with cycling. I don't yeah. think this is great. Well, if so so. Isn't this even better with cycling? Because think about like there aren't cycling lands, so you're going to be drawing into lands more often, and you can cycle those lands away. That, so, so then, uh, what, what's the goal? Are you just trying to deck yourself? <laughs> like, well, I oh. cycle away my spells, and then I discard the lands that I've drawn off those spells that I've cycled. All I'm saying is that you're going to have more lands in hand than often if you have cycling in your deck. Say it again. You're going to have more lands. You're going to have drawn more lands over the course of the game if you have cycling spells in your deck. And this is a way to get rid of those lands and use those lands. I guess, yeah. And, and maybe this is just like too, like, even though one man is cheap, maybe that's just too big of a cost. You just can't afford to do that, right? I can see that being the, 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 true as well. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's also like it's a fine body to, to mutate onto because you could no, get to... No, 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 no. <laughs> Human. This is good. I will have gone through every human <laughs> for the viewers, for the purposes of the viewers. Uh, all right. I give this card. My my judge calls look like this, so yours can look like this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're just getting it all out now. That's good. Uh, so I, I want to give this a C minus. I like I like C on this one, okay. but I respect the C minus because I, I know. Um, so what was um I guess uh, the one from War was like was that when you cast an on creature you could loot or was that a different set I'm thinking of? that was uh, Almond Cat right. So the the looter from War was what two mana to loot? And it was one three. There was a looter in War. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very good. So maybe this card isn't that good. Uh, I'm gonna see on C, but we'll we'll. We'll see where this one goes. I, I can see it being C minus as well. Vertical mammal. What's the? Yeah, I know they're rare. What's the point? The triome lands have cycling. What is? Why is that relevant? Oh, okay. See, I think I think I said the lands don't have cycling in this set. Oh, okay. But I, you know, there's no. Yeah, there's but no... there are five rares that do. So yeah. that's that's gonna come up a lot. Yeah. Uh, Frost Links is back. Two and a blue for an uh, elemental cat. You can't. You can mutate onto this. <laughs> you can. It's a two-two when it ETBs. You tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. There are. Oof. I like this card in the yeah, I like it in the context of the set a lot. I do too. This is so this is another part of the like I was saying there's a lot of cards in the set that say like nope you can't do something for a turn or like nope that's tapped down. Like mm -hmm. it, it really tempered the whole like mutate thing so you're not just getting fashion of mutate creatures on turn four, right? Yeah. The, this is a great design and this is great in the context of the set. Yeah. Um cool art too. A lot of the good mutate stuff happens at four. So like I'm looking like looking at Fertilid, this, the the i can't keep forgetting what it's called but the new skittering surveyor like yeah far going three into four is gonna be good and this is just i like just curving frost links into dream tail heron is what i'm thinking about yeah no i i like this i'm I gonna go c plus yeah i'll go c plus on this one yeah. you know like it's funny because like frost links was really good the first time we saw it and then pretty medium right yeah yeah the rest 
Um, I think it's gonna be good here. I think it's gonna be good. Water Trap Weaver was pretty good when we when yeah, we saw yeah, that's him. Yeah. Good. Okay, so we have Frostvale Ambush. So this is three blue blue for an instant. Tap up to two character creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controllers. Next untap step and it has Psych Blink. So this is just another one of those cards that is good in specific situations, but has mm -hmm. Psych Blink when when you, when those situations don't come up, which is great, right? I like I like cycling on this type of card. Yeah. So what? The first copy is a C. Yeah, especially because like you're just gonna want random cycling cards and random instant cards in your mm -hmm. blue decks. So I think I think we're just gonna go C. It could be just it could be at the point where it's just like we just don't want this card in our deck. We have better things to do, and that's just like you know D plus C minus range. But you know it, it's somewhere in there. I, I'm gonna start at a C. But yeah, I, I'm really excited about this this card. <laughs> yeah, me too. Actually, funny. Gl Glimmer Bell is one in a blue for a one three <laughs> elemental jellyfish with flying, and has one in a blue untap Glimmer Bell. So if you already like gone through and looked at what stupid things you can do. No, I haven't, but it's just like, it's just, uh, I haven't, I haven't gone that deep, but it's just cool having like your, uh, you know, you're mutating onto this thing. Yeah. Like so I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the tap abilities are that are mutate, but I'm excited to find out. Oh, there's one really cool one. There's a, there's a pinger that pings for every time the thing's mutated. Oh, Ooh, that, that is pretty, yeah. Porky Parrot. That, that's awesome. Okay. So that's one little awesome thing, but on its own, this is like, just like a cool little card, nice little piece of synergy. Fine body on it. Two mana one three flyers have overperformed. Yeah, and like this is I think significant not significantly better, but it's a notch better than that, right? Having the ability and like a cheap keyword mutate a build card. Like that that matters. So oh. yeah. Yeah. So I I'm, like gonna, I'm gonna go C for Glimmer Bell. Yeah, C. Perfectly perfect C. Alright, we've got Gust of Wind. Ooh, baby. So this is three to blue for a sorcery. The spell costs two less to cast if you control a creature with flying. Return target all on permanent. You don't control to its owner's hand and draw a card. Yes. Yeah, this is cool. At so common. So at at four, this isn't the worst thing in the world, and at two, it's insane. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't w love a card that has me saying, "Well, this isn't the worst thing in the world," but in like, I think th this is the the flying payoff at common, right? Like, like I was saying, there's not uh, a ton of payoffs for the allied cards at common, but this is the one I believe. Um. Yeah, this is good. And it, it, it messes up Mutate? Kind of, though, right? Well, like, sort of. I mean, it's a yeah, huge yeah. tempo play against Mutate. Yeah. But they get back all the cards. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, C on this one? I can see this going higher. I can yeah, see I kind of want to give the first copy a C+. Plus. Yeah, it's 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 good value. And, like, judging by... Hmm. I guess we'll have to see. So we've already seen two flyers at common. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is, like, a secret gold card in blue-white. But, yeah, I like, I like C... Into well, the... Like they get their cards back, but it's a, it's like even a bigger tempo below the normal if you you bounce a mutate card, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is calling this into the royal. That's easier. Like, think of an eye into the royal is still better than this. Oh, instant makes instant makes that like. And so the much. flexibility of like. Yeah. Two mana. I can cast it for two when I need to. I can cast it for four when I when I want to. Yeah. This is like, this is a lot worse than the instant speed versions, but it's still good. Yeah. Hampering Snare is up next. Is one in a blue for an instant. Creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus O oh until end of turn, and a cycling two? Mm. Whoa. So you remember Crippling or Creeping Chill? Was that what it is? The or I don't remember what the card was. It was from M19. It was like three mana. Your it was this card, but yes. you draw a card and it was three mana. That card ended up being really good. Yeah. Um, like huge overperformer. This card you don't draw the card, which is big. Um I don't know. I don't know what this card is really doing. Like it's, hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's it's really tricky. Again, like it, it falls into the same camp of like situationally great card that has cycling. Cycling two is way more than cycling one. I don't know. It's it's hard to evaluate this it's one. Cheap though. We usually see this effect cost like three or four. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna just give this a C minus. Like, I'm, I'm down. I'm down for C minus. Like you're not. You're not putting this card in your. You're not. Right. Dying. That's the thing. Like, again, like it feels like in a normal set, you'd be like, cool. Yeah. Exactly. This yeah. set is not normal. There's a lot of very, very powerful cards. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have keep safe here. One in a blue for an instant. Counter target spell that targets a permanent you control and draw a card. Hmm. So sort of dive down. Sort of dive down. Two like, mana. Sort of hexproof. Yeah. Leaving up two mana is a lot harder than leaving up one. Yes, but um, draw a card is a lot more than not drawing a card. <laughs> yeah, it's like infinitely more. So again, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't like this card. When I first saw the card, when I first saw this card, my initial 
I think my my idea of what was how mutate was going to play out was a little bit different. I was you know I was kind of assuming that we're going to like mutate on the same thing, keep building up this like mutate monster, and this is you know there's going to be a pivotal turn where like you you go to mutate, and then you untap you hope you untap with it, and then like you keep this up for the rest of the game, and you have this like giant mutate totem pole that you you can't ever interact with. Like, that's great. I think that's the idea with this card. I'm I'm loving it less now that I've seen the full set. Um, but I don't know it. It's gonna get you sometimes, and it's it's. I think the biggest impact this card is gonna have on the format is like being like, oh no, what if my opponent has keep safe for it? <laughs> like, right. The, the but the thing about, and I think the thing that we keep, or that uh I feel like is dangerous to keep thinking about when we we're talking about like mute, like oh, mutating and mutating again. Yeah. The creature's not getting bigger. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, it, like that's, we're not Voltron yeah. here. And that's that's one of the questions I have though. Like it's like. How incentivized are we going to be to keep mutating? Because I think you're right. The, the creatures don't get bigger, mm -hmm. but you do have to think about like how like the the, the growth you get on uh, on on your triggers is is kind of it's not exponential, but it, it you stack. It, dep stack it depends stack. what they are. Sometimes they are. Yeah, exactly. So like you, there is incentive to keep stacking, even though your creatures don't get giant, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, this one I I I, I think the jury's out on this one. I don't know how often we're going to be stacking up our mutates. Is that, that's that's that is, you know, that's going to be a function of how good this card is. Compare this to Starlet Mantle has been said in chat. Starlet Mantle is much better than this card, in my opinion. I think they're similar. So what do you, what do you like better about Starlet Mantle? Like, plus one, plus one? Yeah, the fact that you can play it as a, a combo. The fact that you can only play this, this card, in response yes. to a removal spell. That is, that is So you can only play this in response to maybe five cards in your opponent's deck. That is huge. That, like, that, yeah. So you've got, you've got a very narrow window where you can actually cast this card. I, I don't. I, I think this card I, is not good. Let's, let's do D on this one. What's that? Well, let's do D. Do you like D? D? I, I like. I kind of like a sideboard grade, honestly. Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Because um, if it has targets, it's really good, right? Yeah. It's like it's veil of summerish, right? And like that's that's a huge blow. And obviously, one is way less than two, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like that. Uh, of one mind is two and a blue for a sorcery. It costs two less to cast if you control a human creature and a non-human creature, and you draw two cards. Hmm. Yeah, this is really pushing the divination. Yeah, I know, right? So if we are assuming that we are going to have a mix of humans and non-humans in our non-white decks, or even in our white decks, this is quite good. Um, you don't want divination generally in... I mean, even in your even some of your blue decks, you don't want divination. Um, I don't know if this format, if this is like a Dominaria format, divination yeah, is gonna yeah. be great. I think it's. I think judging by just like the the aggressive tools, I don't think it's gonna be a Dominaria format. Mm -hmm. Um, like Dominaria was like way on one end of the spectrum where the aggressive tools were terrible. Yeah. I think so far, we've seen like pretty good aggressive tools. Um, I I'm willing to give this card just like I think straight up C, and I can see it being a C plus though. Yeah, I'm I'm good with the C for this. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Phase Dolphin. This is through two and blue for a one four. Elemental whale. Whenever phase dolphin attacks, another target attacking creature can't be blocked. Okay, I did a quick check, and this is not a human. <laughs> you can mutate. So you onto can this. mutate onto this, and it's got a nice little aggressive ability. Also, but also like a good three mana one four body. I don't know. This is probably like a C minus. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how often. Like, I'm trying to think of the blue color pairs that want to attack. Like. Blue red, probably. Blue Can I can I just introduce you to Dreamtail Heron? He'd love to attack with the Dreamtail Heron. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah. Phase Dolphin is gonna play really well oh. with Thieving Otter. Yeah, Otter it's gonna yeah, Otter I think Otter is in, in the in contention for top uh one of the top of the commons just because of the ways the force is but we'll get to that one. Yeah. Um but this card, so the problem with this card is that it's not like a you know, like we've seen Trusted Pegasus, the the two two flyer from our devastation that did this same thing um like this gets double blocked pretty quick yeah right so i don't love it but it's not bad by any means and also like mutating on this like you said is quite good i'm i'm fine with a c on this card like see i can see oh. i guess I, I can see being c minus as well yeah you know i don't know if it jives with what blue is really doing aside yeah. from like the thieving otter blue red deck yeah yeah it's kind of like misford river river turtle yeah 
It's exactly yeah. the turtle for one one mana cheaper and one toughness less. Yeah. Yeah. Coming down on a three is, is like way more better than coming down on a four for that kind yes. of thing. Yes. Three but... mana one four better much better than a four mana one five. Yeah. What do you want to get it? I gave it a C minus. Yeah, sure. I, I like that. Startling development is one of blue for an instant. Until end of turn, target creature becomes a blue serpent with base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, and it has cycling 1. So it's like a combat trick with cycling, once again. Yeah. Right? There, I'm trying to think, is there any applications for this that I'm not thinking of? In the uh, context? Y- yeah, not, I mean... Like with... with uh, plays with counters, counters well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, this is just like, is the a long line of the cards in blue that are just like situationally good, but with cycling, right? I don't think I don't think there's too much more. Oh my god! Yes, you can mutate <laughs> onto humans now. That's <laughs> yes, you can mutate onto humans with this card. All okay. right, all right. Uh, this is like a C minus. Yeah, C minus. It's it's yeah, just cycling card. Yep. All right. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Thieving otter. So it's two in blue for a otter. Whenever a thieving otter deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. Two two. Cool. Pretty got a lot of good things with it. Pretty uh, dang good. Good with Starling development. <laughs> it, it forces, you know, it incentivizes mm-hmm. blocks. It's good with the. It's good with the dolphin. It's good with the heron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there. You know, this. I'm trying to think. So, so we've had this card before. It's been uncommon. Um, this card without mutate is just good. Like. Yeah. This is yeah. just a good card, period. Yeah. And in the yeah, context of this set, I think it is fantastic. Yeah, because opponent has to respect it, right? Yes. Do you like C plus? I'm 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 gonna start with C plus. I would not be surprised if it if it maybe edged into B minus. Yeah, my my one gripe against it is like I think like we don't have a cheap unsummon and that uh that really plays well with these cards. But uh yeah, I'm I'm good with with C plus. Yeah. Last common here is Wingfold Terran, which is five and a blue for a three six Dino. When it ETBs, it comes in with your choice of a flying counter. Yeah, right. It's gonna come in with <laughs> with a hexproof counter. Eh, it's it's fine. It's six mana. It's like a C minus. Yeah, I, I don't know. Th- this card could be great. I don't know if the format's going to be slow enough. For this to be like oh, here comes the pterodon you know yeah like, it's all it's not like the the snapping the the four or five hex proof like so it kind of gives you those vibes what's making you feel like the format's aggressive so far from what from what we've seen is, it, is there stuff that we haven't seen yet in in no, our discussions I, I just think that a lot of the cards are incentivizing you to play to the board a lot like the, there's it seems like there's a lot of stuff to do with your mana that isn't that incentivizes you to like keep building up your board rather than journaling and like trying to get to the late game there's a lot of things that like even in blue the, the do things when you attack we've seen like all the white pump spell stuff yeah like even even in blue like look thieving otter right like in phase dolphin and and the heron that kind of stuff mm-hmm. right i don't think it's gonna be like an aggressively like in like you know you, you were even saying i i know this is like you were saying it somewhat in a facetious manner but you're saying it was no block format for a little while yeah right yeah. And there are some there's some aspects of that for sure. Like there's like these super aggressive combat tricks. Well, you're, but well, I'm I'm more saying t- to the person who doesn't seem to think we're going to be mutating on curve. Like, what makes you think that if you don't think we're doing that, then I don't think the format's aggressive. Well, no, I think I think that's that's kind of what makes the format aggressive because like we're, we're you're going to you're you're going to be playing out your creatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not mutating on curve, right? Well, but I think mutating on curve makes the format aggressive. <laughs> that's so funny. So. But, but we already said, like, it doesn't contribute to stats, right? Well, but it, uh, it doesn't... Does it, it, so, but, so, hasty, okay. but it gives you hasty stats. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm also seeing, I think I'm also seeing this format a little bit like War, where the board presence is huge, because if your opponent has a mutate creature that just can go ham, that's that's terrible for you. Yes. I think you want to get on board early in this format. Yes. So, yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to be, like, an overly aggressive format, but I think it's going to be, you know, like we've seen in the past few sets where, like, you just you can't do nothing and you can't, like, rely on your six-mana card to, like, be the thing that wins you the game. I say as you came off of a format of Dreamcrawler, yeah. but I digress. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm good for C- minus here. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right, moving on to the uncommons. We've got Archipelago, just <laughs> five blue-blue for a 7-7. Seven, seven. It has mutate for five and a blue. 
Whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. I don't love it. Why? It's really expensive. Six mana, seven, seven with haste that taps a thing down and keeps it tapped for a turn. It's like six, six mana, six, six, haste, fro six mana, seven, seven, haste, frost links. Hmm. So it's more like, I, I mean, it obviously depends what you put it on, right? You can put this on two drop and then like, yeah, it'll feel like a seven, seven. But like, say you put it on, like, it's more like an aura that does that. Um. Yeah, this is a good stabilizing play. This is a huge swing. Yeah, this is huge. Um, well, it's also like it's just just a huge swing. Like you think you're like racing with your opponent or whatever, and then they just slam this. They take out your best blocker, and now that it like enables this to it now the hasty seven seven and maybe other attacks enabled. Yeah, you talked me into this. Okay, I like this. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, I I, I mean it it kind of has like the the fair spam brawler problem, right? Where like you're just not taking this early. Yeah, I, I, you're talking to the wrong person because I don't know how to draft Ferris Band deck, but <laughs> man, I, I like Ferris no, Band Brawler. No, but 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 you but you know you're you're totally in the same camp. Well, you say this multiple times. You're just like I I hate starting to draft with the six drop, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it's the same it's the same thing, right? It's yeah. Uh, so I think I think this card is good. I, I like C plus. C plus. I could see it being a B minus. Yeah, I I think I think so too. But once again, just like being expensive. Yeah. All right, with Avian Oddity. So this is <clears throat> four mana. For a 2 4 flyer with cycling for three mana. When you cycle Avian Oddity, put a flying counter on target creature you control. So, if this is in your opener, you're playing it as a four mana 2 4 flyer. Yeah. And then if you top deck it, it probably, you, you hope that like this, you have something big enough or you're in a board stall and this breaks that open, whatever. Or, or you just want a four mana 2 4 flyer. This just seems rock solid to me. Yeah, the cool thing about. Yeah, this is rock solid, this card in general. The cool thing about this cycle is that, like, in the late game, this is some nice velocity, right? Oh. Just, like, making making your thing flying, getting in, drawing a card. Like, that's really good. Um, so that's what I, I really do like about this cycle, and, and I think this one kind of exemplifies that. This is, like, the perfect version of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's just, once again, it's just super solid. I think we're just going to go B plus on this one. Oh, sorry, C plus, C plus, sorry. I think, I think uh, I'm going to go B minus. This feels like a pull into blue to me. Nope. Okay. I mean, I just don't feel like excited about this card, right? I think I'm not like, whew, avian oddity. Let's do it. But maybe you feel that way. I feel that way. I don't know. I, mean, I just like stuff that I, I I really value. So, looking at obviously cycling in the f set in general gives stuff a lot of versatility. But on something like this in particular, I feel like I like that it feels kind of clear to me what its roles are in like what it's doing, yeah, in the stages of the game. Whereas like other things like. Or I'm like, yeah, this has cycling, so I guess you could put it in your deck, but do I really want to do that because it has cycling? This is a card where I'm like, this is great, and when I don't want it to be the 4-mana 2-4 flyer that is going to be good, then I can just draw a card and give something else flying. I just think it's I think it's strong. Yeah, right. especially like putting this on like your mutate pile, if that's a thing. Right, you can mutate onto it, so it has flying, though. You know, you'd have to have something good, but Archipelago, 7-7 seven, <laughs> seven, seven hasty pretty, flyer, yes, please. Pretty good target, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good target. So... I, I'm gonna say it's C plus, but I, I respect the B minus. Uh, just because how solid it is. Boon of the Wish Giver. Here we go. Four blue blue Maybe. sorcery, draw four, cycling one. <sighs> yeah, this this card. This this card is great. Uh I mean so we had we had you know, the thing that would make this card not that good is this is a format worth like war where you just need the board presence. Uh and like, you know, Cameo's Epiphany. I think a lot of us had like as the best blue common going in and it ended up being like an okay card, like a one of, mm -hmm. um, obviously cycling one makes this, you know, it, it, it mitigates but this that a lot. If you're cycling this 90% of the time, it doesn't make this card very busted. It, exactly. It's exactly like you guys had on the show with, uh, with what was the card from mom and cat? The, the lay, late, lay claim. Lay claim. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like both. It's very analogous to the, to lay claim where it's just like uh, busted cards from previous sets. So it was like control magic and opportunity with cycling, but the format might not allow for it. Now, I don't know if it's going to be as aggressive as Omnicap. Probably not. Um, but that's that's a world we could live in, right? I'm going to start this off at a, at a B, yeah. but I can I can see that shifting to lower or maybe higher, you know? Right. Yeah. All right, next up, we got Escape Protocol. This is one in a blue <laughs> for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. 
When you do exile target artifact or creature you control, then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Uh... So, so what are we doing with this card? I not that I don't want to write this out. Like I, I think it's it's super powerful. I just want to know like what what do you envision doing with it? So we haven't seen a ton of ETBs. Yeah, that's obviously the best. But what you can do is split up your mutates. <laughs> that is true. That's that's cute. So like you got you get your value from mutating your heron on, and then you're like, all right, but I want my heron and then I want my other creature. It also just turns all of your your uh, cycling cards into keep safe or whatever that card is. Right. Right. Yeah. Just like you go to I'm like okay, I'm gonna block, and then or I attack <laughs> and then they do something. And you're like, great, I'm gonna cycle and flick. Yeah, and like they they can never cast a combat trick profitably ever again yeah um again this card if like like i felt about some white stuff like I, with this card i'm like okay so i need good things to <laughs> mutate onto good mutate cards good etb effects and a lot of cycling and this derpy enchantment like i don't know but yeah I, this this feels like a oh look like i don't know it's either gonna fall into the camp of like oh look i'm doing the thing or no this is just a good card and i'm not sure which one it's going to be my gut says it's going to more be like the look i'm doing a thing kind of card just because like i think this is a card that's going to really benefit from the sand black style like yeah look at look at the four color pair decks and have this as one of your cards and go okay what's the best thing to do and i think that'll give you a really good idea of one which deck this has the best home in and two what are the kinds of cards you're looking for and then you can sort of figure out well this is how i prioritize them I wouldn't be surprised if this is like one of the like the allied color pair gold cards. Like it's like mm. a blue black card or yeah. a or a blue white card. I think that that's that's pretty pretty probable because like I don't know how much blue red wants this. I don't know how much blue uh, blue green wants this. Eh, maybe a bit. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I I'm I'd like to hear your grade on this. I'm gonna be uh, optimistic and give this a build around B. Build around B. Okay. Don't think I'm willing to go that high. I'll but you know. Coward. <laughs> yeah i if i were just like look at this card i i'd give it like a, a, a c c sorry c plus but c plus you, know. you but don't you i feel like you well whatever i feel like if you're not giving this a build around grade then you'll just never you'll never do you might as well yeah, just give it an f right like yeah yeah that's fair that's fair i don't know I, yeah. I i can appreciate that that line of thinking all right mystic subdual is one of the blue for an aura it has flash and it gives enchanted creature minus two minus two and it loses all of, or minus two minus oh and loses all abilities this is good this is this is pretty powerful. So, you know, again, we're not uh, we're not building up monsters power and toughness wise. It's mostly like the thing we care about is losing the abilities on on the the mutate creatures and just like taking out a small creature, making it small. So minus two, minus two isn't huge, but having flash is really so that's really nice. the thing. So all right, well, so let's think about this. So in yeah. Eldrain, we saw uh, the minus two minus O, but it was minus six minus O if it if you they, the controller had seven yeah. or more cards. Um, the minus two minus zero on that was not good. Like you really, like, th that card was good when you could give the thing minus six minus zero. And then we saw slime bind in Ravnica Allegiance, and that was good. That was good. Minus four was good enough. Minus four was good enough. Minus two is not good enough. But this is an uncommon, not a common. So I I'm gonna like take that as a hint that this is better than it looks, and the losing abilities is relevant. Yeah, I think that's the big thing, right? It's just like if your opponent has like a stack of two mutate, like imagine. Imagine your opponent has like think about this, right? Your opponent has a mutate card on top of a mutate card. They go for sick value on a second. You know, you, you have two mana up. There's not much that can blow them out. They go for another mutate card. So they're losing the board presence there because they didn't play the creature. They want to just mutate. You cast this in response. They just get the one trigger, and their creature is smaller, mm -hmm. right? So like, I don't think this card is like insane or anything, but I I'm willing to start at like a C plus. I'm gonna start at C. Okay, yeah. Like it takes out most of White's creatures. Um, mm -hmm. it doesn't interact very well with any any like counters. Like you know, your opponent has anything that gives their creatures plus one plus one counters. But uh, yeah, I I can I can respect. I'm gonna go C plus. But cool. All right, we have neutralized here. We have one blue blue instant counter target spell, cycling two. Nice plays with itself, right? We just get to uh, hold up our mana and cycle it away if the opponent doesn't doesn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, uh c plus yeah i go c plus it's it's hard once again like this is this is nice it goes you know we've got a lot of we've shown they've shown we have a lot of stuff to do in speed so like i think cancel is going to be a good card in the set yeah um yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes 
Next one's really interesting. Yeah, Ominous Seas is one in a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. And then you can remove eight foreshadow counters from Ominous Seas to create an 8 8 blue Kraken creature token, and it has cycling two. I am in for this card. I think this card's quite good, yeah. So yes. you play it on two. Well, this is, this is, no, no, obviously, this is a good scenario for the card. But if you play it on two, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a suspend eight. Eight, eight. that's not good right but if you're cycling right. you get an eight eight you know pretty you, you know turn turn six maybe and that's not fun that's not or, bad or you have divination in your deck or, or you, you have, have the, the deck, four mana exactly. bounce draw card or you have a looter like yeah you have the loot. there's a lot of there's a lot of cards we've seen that work that yeah, play well with this and then when right? you don't have it on turn two guess what <laughs> you cycle it away exactly yeah and this card's i think this card is quite good um and you know of note in case Somebody might have missed this. You don't have to sacrifice this card. You can make multiple. Right, you could make two eight eights. You're not going to do that very often, but it's a thing. Yeah, uh, this this works like? from cy with, This works with cycling to answer a question in chat. I like. Uh, I want to give this a B. Yeah, I was going to say B B minus. Uh, I, I think maybe it takes like a little bit too much to get your eight eight out of it. Like not not to say like a lot, but like for for putting it at a B, you know. Like, I think it might just be like. So let's assume so you play it on turn two. Let's assume you've got a deck built for it. Maybe you need to give it a build around grade. Like, obviously, you're not drawing multiple cards every turn. So let's say you're drawing. You get this out, what, turn. It's like suspend six. Yeah, that's about right. At a, but at a certain point, though. <laughs> you're a punk like i don't know basically like once you have like six counters on it your opponent's got to be like they could have an eight eight at instant speed yeah and the the, the cycling things are one man right so it's like right it's very easy to be like well they could just have it here right yeah okay I, yeah, maybe maybe you know, just maybe just b minus well. i think b minus i think b minus i think i think the card is finicky enough that, yeah, that's, that's, uh, fair. that's fair that's fair yeah this next one. Oh man, I am excited about this one. This is Polylog Symbiote. This is one in a blue for a 1 3. Frog. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Isn't this card nuts? Yeah, this card is amazing. This card's busted, right? right like, so this, is, this not only reduces the cost of the creature, it reduces the mutate cost as well. Yeah, so who cares if you're like, you know, you, like if, even if you don't want to mutate early in the game like we're talking about we, that you probably don't this just makes your four drops cost three and your five drops cost four and you can double spell on turn three with two three drops or sorry on turn four with two three drops like and then you loot with them like <laughs> that's insane yeah. like so like velocity man like this is this is velocity this is mana generation this is a, a target for your mutate cards although you probably won't want to mutate on this one but you can this is like you told me we're never mutating you were never mutating, not even once. We're never gonna mutate in this format. No blocks, mute, no mutates. Exactly. Yeah, I think this is, and this even incentivizes those play patterns where like you can go all in on your mutates because you get like you can mutate multiple times in a turn, so you guarantee that value, and your loot away like less relevant cards. I I want to give this a B plus. B plus. Right. I'm gonna go B, but I think yeah, you're right. I think I think this is like. This is probably the best blue uncommon, right? Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if this isn't a top isn't a top five blue uncommon. Or sorry, top five blue, top top five uncommon in general. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Pouncing Shore Shark is four in a blue for a four three with flash. When it whenever it mutates, you can return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand and has a mutate cost of three in a blue. Yeah, yeah, this one's this one's sweet. Um, two, two thumbs again, two thumbs up for me. Two thumbs up for me but too. You'll yeah. But the mutate text isn't relevant. You're not never, you're never not mutating. One, not one bit. <laughs> so this is the one. So this is what I was talking about, right? This is the kind of card I like because it's tempo positive. Even though you're investing in into what is inherently a tempo negative strategy, it is a tempo positive play, and especially when you can keep recouping the value by, by mutating again, right? Yeah, I uh, like this one. B. I'm, I'm in for B. Looser Booster yeah. is saying that that we have to give this some polywog symbiote some sort of synergy grade. I think in the same way that like escape there like the, there wasn't really escape synergies just it was just so prevalent like i don't think you like you're gonna have mutate cards yeah like it, again i think it's like if you were if i were to tell if i were to give that a, a grade to somebody who has literally never looked at the set or is very inexperienced limited and said this is a b like that's gonna lead them astray 
But I assume, you know, 90% of the people or more in this chat are going to know, like, yeah, of course you have to put mutate cards in your deck. And I don't think that's a, that's a very big of a cost, right? It's not a yeah. large cost. Attacking open mana seems bad. Yeah, this card is ridiculous against mutate as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, all right. So we've got Reconnaissance Mission. This is a Coastal Piracy. Uh, this is two blue blue enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals com deals yeah deals combat damage, not just damage to a player, you may draw a card. So hits hits the player, draw the card, and it has cycling two. Eh. Yeah, I I, I I like this card. I like this card. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's super powerful. I feel like you're going to be cycling this more often than not, though. Yes, I agree. So we you like do you like C plus on this one or B minus? Well, but like so. If you're if we're cycling boon wish boon of the wish giver, yeah, ninety percent of the time, and we're which giving I don't think we are eighty percent of the time. Oh, you think? Oh, you you think we are? You think that's like not something we're gonna do very often? Is that is that what you're saying? I think so. I think this is going to be a very high pick, but I don't know how often we're casting this for six mana. Interesting. Okay. And, and so I feel like similarly to this, like when this is gonna be good, it's gonna be amazing. And when it's not, you just cycle it. I can see a world where this is a higher pick than Boon. I don't think it's higher, but I think it's. I'm, I feel like I, in my mind, they're similar. Yeah, no, me too, me too. Um, to draw multiple cards off your otter. Thank you. Yeah. All uh, right, so I, you I'm gonna you, give this like a B minus. B minus, sure. Yeah, I can see it being much worse or much better. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, B minus as a hedge. All right, Wingspan Mentor is the last uncommon two and a blue for a one three human wizard. When ETBs, you put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control, and you can pay two in a blue to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. Holy crap! Yeah, so you don't get a lot of stats for no. your mana, but you get flying. Um, yeah, this one's tricky. Like all, all I think this cycle is actually pretty tricky to evaluate because, like, when you read them, they look very powerful. You're like, put a plus one plus one counter on all my flying creatures. That's so good. But, like, it's pretty clunky. The body isn't great. It's good, though. So what if this were just an enchantment? I don't think it would be good. Just two and a blue, put a flying counter on something, and then... Tap it to... To, to, to pump up your stuff? I don't, yeah, I don't think that card's that good. No, that's not good. That's basically what this is. The body matters, for sure. Like, you can rebuy it, and you can, like, yeah, just, like, you know, bounce it. All the things that you can do with a body. Um... Double blocking is a thing. C plus. Oh man, giving a flying counter is big game, it feels like. Blue man, yeah. Maybe there's like a blue white skies deck where this is is very good. Yeah, I mean they they're they're you know, ostensibly is if we're to buy into the the color pairs, right? You said C plus? Yeah, I think that's C where plus. I wanna that's where I wanna be. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Only there's only gonna be four blue rares. All right, let's get into them. So the first rare here is Mytho Mythos of Eluna. It's two blue blue for sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target permanent. If red green was spent to cast the spell, instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent. Except the token has when this permanent ETBs. If it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Ooh, baby. That's sweet. Um, again, I think I think these Mythos cards are going to be quite good because they're just like i mean the white one wasn't fine on its own but this one's fine on its own it's mm -hmm. not great but it, it, this copies anything it's not just your things right mm -hmm. it's gonna be the biggest thing on the battlefield yep target permanent too that's interesting yep. um if you copy, this is actually kind of cool if you copy you know a mutate thing you get all the all the mutates like yeah it's it's all the abilities yep and then yeah you can fight something spell this card seems very good like this <laughs> is just a, this is this is just flame tongue kabu when this you is, cast it for, this is an a yeah, this is an A. I, you know, like, first read didn't seem like an A. Assuming, like, yeah. assuming you you're you're casting the teamer. Assuming it's teamer, it's an A, and then assuming it's not teamer, it's like a B, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and like clones are even better in this set than they normally would, I think. Well, you just, you don't get all the mutates. Like it doesn't you know copy the the things, but it. The, the, you don't get the triggers, right? You don't get, you don't the, get triggers the triggers or whatever, but it will have it will have whatever text the creature has. So it'll have all yeah, the ability, like you, have the power and toughness from the top, and all the characteristics of everything else. And then if you mutate again, you get all the triggers, right? So yeah. that's awesome. Uh, C dash or octopus. This is also an awesome crit. So this is one blue blue. Uh, mutate for two mana. Flash two two. When this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. 
Again? <laughs> yeah, again. More? Do we need more? Well, you get to flash mutate it onto something, so you get to like just basically cycle it, and then, and then yeah. the creature has the thing for the rest, and also gets other mutate abilities. I mean, I think instant speed mutate is gonna be very good. It's super cheap mutate too, right? Like, yeah. obviously, yeah, you just cycle it the first time, um, but then it, it turns into a must answer threat, basically, mm -hmm. right? Um, especially on a big thing like that's one of the things with the with the otter, it's really small, right? With this. You can put it on something else. I mean, obviously, you can you can mutate the otter as well, but right. this gives the ability to something hitting large, uh, just you know, automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, I like a like a, a B on this one. I like B as well. All right, uh, we've got Shark Typhoon, Sharknado over here, five and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's CMC. You can also cycle it for X1 blue, and when you cycle it, you make an XX blue shark creature token with flying. So it's uh, Cloudkin Seer plus, 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 basically. E e yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I'm not even sure. That was not my first yeah, yeah, analogy first card I was thinking of. <laughs> I didn't read Shark Typhoon and go, oh, sick. Cloudkin Seer. Cloudkin Seer is back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, <laughs> so what do you think? The, how how often do you think you're gonna be playing this? How often do you think you're gonna be cycling this? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I, don't I know. think it's really powerful. It's very like, good. The, like both modes are good. I think and, this is an A for flexibility and power. Yeah, yeah. Current if you have great. the time, like basically by about turn six or turn five, when you get to five or six mana, you'll know. Hey, would I rather just have a four four flyer that draws me a card? At yeah. instant speed. Exactly, exactly. Or would I ra like? Or do I have a grip? Or did I build a good like blue red spells deck, <laughs> and I can afford to take a turn off for this, and then just go ham? By turn four, you'll you'll know. Hey, did I build a good deck? And then you'll be able to see. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Just like every every set, every point in the curve, this is good to cycle too, right? Like, you know, it's three man. You get the the two two flyer. Or sorry, one one. Oh, so I guess it's cloud. Uh, it's not cloudkin. It's it's sky scanner. But still, like scaling up everywhere that that's good. And then yeah, it's it's not. Why are we comparing this to commons in core sets? Because <laughs> that's my jam. <laughs> Good God. All right, um, this is an A, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So we have voracious great shark. Three blue blue for a flash five four. When voracious great shark enters the battlefield, counter target artifacts. Or creature spell. So it's like Thrix, but for the stack. Comes down, eat something on the stack. But this can also just come down and eat a creature <laughs> in combat. What do you mean this is Thrix? <laughs> All right, I'll These stop, comparisons I'll stop are killing me. <laughs> this so what is, do you think? This <laughs> is like Thrix as a 5 4. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Th this card is great. Yeah, this card's very good. This is like this is another A, right? This is better than Thrix. <laughs> because it has the option of either ambushing a creature in combat or countering a spell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. another A. Yeah, just another blue's a. rares are great, right? Holy like, crap. Blue and blue's commons are really powerful. Yeah, blue's commons are quite good. We got the otter, essence scatter, I think Capture Sphere will have a place. Uh the 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 heron, which I'm a big fan of, but whatever. There's the like you know the sorcery bounce draw card. I think. Yeah. I think blue I, I, is looking great. My one concern about blue is it like seems to be a kind of like a, a big pocket of like air cards, right? There's just like all these like, all right, you can cycle it if it's bad. But, but like, that, I think you just don't play those cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, and then if you have to, you do, and you cycle them away. So yeah, not the worst thing in the world. All right, cool. That's blue. That's blue.